the, the South African English Dictionary was begun in the late 1960s as a response to the realization that we had quite a large vocabulary of, of items that were different from other parts of the world. Uh, there had been a dictionary published in 1913 which had looked at South African English. But we, t we wanted to make sure that there was enough to, to write a dictionary from, and there certainly was. So we started collecting um, information, gathering examples of text from books um, in the late 60s, and the book was published in 1996. So it took quite a long time for a small community. We use words like berg for mountain. Felt is well known internationally, but there are many other um, terms for the landscape and so on. A bergy is someone who lives on the berg or the mountain, someone, a kind of tramp who lives in the mountain uh, in the summer and comes down in the winter when it rains. South African English has borrowed quite extensively from Afrikaans uh, and also from, the Afri from several of the African languages, particularly from Xhosa, which um, is in the area where the first settlers arrived, and then from Zulu and from Sesotho, which is where missionaries were sent out, and so English came into contact with those, those languages. The Indian community, uh, which is extensive in South Africa, a million strong, which uses English as its lingua franca, uh, has made English into something of an Indian language. It, there's a number of terms for uh, religion, for food, uh, dress, which are retained from the Indian languages. They are interesting idioms and proverbs. For example, in this Indian community of Natal to say he wants mutton curry and rice every day, this really is a way of saying he expects the best of all worlds at all times. I think English, more than almost any other language, is prepared to um, accept, to borrow, and to adapt words from other languages. And that is why English grows so fast, I think, as, as, as uh, a language. Um, whether it's that's, that's why it spreads as well, I'm not too sure, but it certainly has a very large vocabulary and a very flexible vocabulary. In 200 years' time, it is possible that the English in Cape Town would not be intelligible with the informal laughing and chatting English of, let's say, uh, Libya or India. However, uh, the flip side is that uh, English is determined by the context in which it is used, and speakers throughout the world have a sense of a more appropriate style and for level of formality so that I believe if a Cape Townian were to speak to someone from India in 200 years time that they would in fact try and edit out some of their more localized features. We do this naturally. I, I somehow don't feel that, that English in South Africa is going to become unintelligible to speakers from the rest of the world. There's too much at stake. And one of the beauties of English is that it does enable us to communicate across boundaries. There are obviously going to be more and more items of vocabulary which aren't understandable, but I think that most English speakers are able to almost self-censor and to cut those out of their, their conversation when they are somewhere else.